I want to talk today about how we're going to set up our and run our Grignard reaction. And I'm going to focus on the equipment that we use and how we use this equipment. So what we're starting with, we're going to set up our equipment with a round bottom flask, a Claisen adapter, and the Claisen adapter is going to be attached to a condenser and a dropping funnel. The dropping funnel is called an addition funnel. This tube right here is a pre pressure equalizing feature. It allows the pressure to be maintained and the dropping to happen at an even rate. We may or may not use the pressure equalizing dropping funnel in our experiment. We also have on the end over here a drying tube filled with drying agent. You'll also notice we also have the magnesium in our round bottom, bottom flask already. And I want you to notice that the dropping funnel has a stopper in it to protect it from air. So the first thing we're going to do once we have this all this glass we're set up is we're going to flame dry it to make sure we remove all of the moisture. We want our glassware completely dry. Once this is flame dried, and we're sure that there's no moisture left, we're going to add the bromobenzene. Remember, the first step of this reaction is forming the Grignard reagent, and we're going to be forming it from bromobenzene and magnesium. Bromobenzene will react with magnesium to make the Grignard reagent shown here. So in order to do that, we have to add the bromobenzene to the dropping funnel. We need to get it to the dropping funnel while exposing the, the system and the chemicals to as little moisture as possible. So what we're going to go do is we're going to go to our reagent area and we're going to fill our graduated cylinder, our dry graduated cylinder with the bromobenzene and we're going to make sure it's stoppered. Then we're going to bring it over to our glassware which is also still stoppered. As quickly as possible we remove the stopper from the dropping funnel and the stopper from the graduated cylinder with the bromobenzene and we add the bromobenzene to the dropping funnel. So now the bromobenzene is in the dropping funnel. We open the stopcock here. It's actually already shown in the open position and we let the bromobenzene drip slowly over the course of several minutes onto the magnesium metal. Now this is an exothermic reaction and if the reaction starts it will generate heat. So what you'll have when the um, reaction finishes, when the addition finishes, by the way, before we get to what it looks like when the reaction finishes, I should mention that this contains a mixture of bromobenzene and ether because ether is our solvent. So we add the dry ether in the same way using the graduated cylinder and adding it as carefully and as quickly as possible. So this is a mixture of bromobenzene and ether actually. So it's the bromobenzene ether mixture that gets added to the magnesium metal. And when we finish, we'll have our bromobenzene and ether mixture here with the magnesium metal. And as I said before, this is an exothermic reaction. And if you've kept everything dry, if you prepared the magnesium metal properly, as described separately by grinding it to remove the oxide layer. This reaction will start all by itself. As soon as the bromobenzene and ether hit the magnesium metal, if everything's dry, it will start reacting to make our uh, Grignard reagent, and this will give off heat. It'll give off enough heat so that the ether will actually start to boil on its own and you'll start to see drops of ether forming on the reflux condenser and dripping back down into our flask. Remember you have condensing water going through the condenser in the bottom and out the top. So we're going to be refluxing this and it's going to be generating its own heat because the reaction is exothermic and it should, like I said, if everything's dry, start all by itself almost immediately. Um, and we'll let that run for a little while until it stops generating its own heat. And then we'll heat it for about, after that, for about a half an hour longer, just to make sure the reaction has gone to completion. So the total reaction time will probably be about 45 minutes between the reacting on its own and the uh, additional heat to reflux it. At the end of this period, we should have our Grignard reagent formed. The next thing we need to do is we need to add our 
methyl benzoate that's going to react with this Grignard reagent. Remember, the reaction that's going to happen next is a reaction between methyl benzoate and our Grignard reagent to make triphenylmethanol. Two equivalents of our Grignard reagent are going to react with the ester. And we still need to keep everything dry. So we're going to, do, we're going to treat this similarly to the way we did before. We have to get our solution of methyl benzoate into our dropping funnel as quickly and as dryly as possible. We're going to do similar to what we did before. In our sealed graduated cylinder, we're going to have our methyl benzoate in the dry ether. And we're going to take that and as quickly and as dryly as possible without exposing it to air for very long. Remove this stopper, remove this stopper, and transfer the methyl benzoate and ether to the dropping funnel. So now the methyl benzoate and the ether are in my dropping funnel, and I'm going to do as I did before. I'm going to open the stop clock and, and let it drip slowly into my flask containing my pre-made Grignard reagent. So after we've added the methyl benzoate in the round bottom flask, we'll have a Grignard reagent, methyl benzoate, and the ether that we've added. Now, this will also be an exothermic reaction, and it will react a little, regenerate enough heat to reflux on its own for a few minutes. Not very long, but a few minutes. After that has happened, we're going to heat it for 30 minutes more at reflux just to make sure the reaction goes to completion. Remember, during all of these steps, I've taken every possible precaution that I can to make sure that the reaction has stayed dry. After my 30 minutes of reflux, after the reaction has gone to completion, I can stop worrying about dryness because I'm going to quench the reaction, which means stop any further reaction, and add basically I add water and acid to it. And then there are a number of extraction steps and so on, which I'm not going to go into today. But at that point, at this point in our experiment, we don't have to worry about it being dry anymore. I only wanted to focus on the uh, anhydrous steps today. Your instructor will describe to you the post-reaction workup, but this is what we're going to do to actually accomplish the reaction.